so our next topic is land resources land is very important to us and it is the solid portion of the earth's surface because human civilization has taken place on the land it also fulfills the basic need of human civilization such as foods clothes shelters etc it is used in agriculture it acts as a store point for the basic resources like ground water minerals and fossil fuels it also protects from high temperature of earth's core it provides habitat for most of the flora and fauna and also it regulates the water and carbon cycles it becomes a dumping ground for the solid and liquid waste So now let's talk about the soil profile. Soil profile is the different horizons or the layers in the soil which is having different different uh, colors, textures, root structure and rock fragments. So depending upon the different compositions the layers are divided into different parts and they are the they are the different horizons uh, named as O A E B and C layers and all this is known as soil profile. So let's talk about the first layer and that is O, a humus or organic layer. This does not contain any soil and is it is the uppermost layer and below that there is the top layer, top soil or A layer. So this two layer mostly contains of the, of the humus rich, humus which is rich organic material of plants and animals origin. So this is only covered with the plant leaves and leafletters, needles, twigs or mosses. So this is only layer up to 2 feet, A layer or topsoil. Second is E or elevated horizon and this is the leaching layer or uh, this is also called as leaching layer. This is up to 10 to 15 feet and it is light in color mainly because of the sands and silt because this contains the large amount of leached materials from the topsoil. Next comes the subsoil that is a B layer and it is from 10 to 30 feet and it contains mainly the clays and minerals like iron, aluminium, copper etc. And the color of this layer changes depending upon the composition of different mineral materials. Then comes the parent material that is C layer. It is from 30 to 48 feet and it is composed of large rocks. So it is a big lump of the broken bed rocks so and there is nothing more so everything is rocky there and finally is the bedrock that is R layer it is below 48 feet and it is the deepest soil in the horizon and it is containing only the big rocks continuous mass of bedrock so this is the last layer now Let's talk about the function of soil. Soil is very important for us because it plays a very significant role in our nutrient cycle. It gives the basis of the agriculture production, serves, stores the water and regulates the water cycle and it also decomposes the pollutions and filters the groundwater. It produces most of the clay and brick making industries. It provides a foundation for building also. So now let's talk about the land degradation, their causes, effect and control measures. So what is land degradation? The fertility of land support the growth and productivity of the natural resources. And because of any natural or man-made calamities, if the fertility of land is going away or it is reducing, that means we can say the land degradation is happening. And what are the major causes for this? There are two types of causes. One is natural factor, one is anthropogenic factors. Natural factors include heavy rains, heavy speed wind and storms, natural disasters like earthquake, floods and prolonged drought etc. As well as expansion of deserts and soil erosion. Anthropogenic means man-made causes and they are including mainly mining which generates lots, lots of waste urbanization deforestation and excessive use of pesticides and fertilizers and finally industrial discharge and constructions of dams roads and canals so what are the causes of soil erosion so there are two things 
one is soil erosion and one is desertification so what is soil erosion soil erosion is the removal of the top soil by the wind high speed wind or a high speed rain or water so that is soil erosion now what are the main causes of the soil erosion first is deforestation industrialization pollution flood overgrazing overgrazing means that eating of mm, the grasses by cattle if they are eating too much of grasses that is not good for the soil and soil goes away also so that is one thing another is agriculture mismanagement that means poor crop rotation excessive input of the chemicals or use of heavy machineries and finally large violent winds also causes soil erosion and what are the effects of soil erosion it decreases the productivity of the land secondly desertification of land happens and d reduction in the agricultural land at the bank of the river and deposition of the soil in the river beds and chain canals causing di di diversion diversion of their natural flow and hence leading to disasters so how can we control this how can we control the soil erosion there are three different options for depending upon the slope of the land so for the milder slope we can go for two things one is a reduced tillage and secondly stubble mulching so we can reduce the ch channels or the tillages or we can cover the land with the stubble so that is stubble mulching for the gentle slopes we can go for vegetative bunds or counter bunds strip cropping or counter uh, counter cultivation so what is vegetative bunds it is making bunds with the vegetables which can hold the land for little stronger with a stronger roots secondly counter cultivation is cultivating on the different levels of the land so if some part of the land is at the higher level we can grow something else over there so they can hold the land thirdly crop strip cropping strip cropping means the crops are planted in the form of strips with the, some uh, bigger crops and then some smaller crops and finally counter bunds counter bunds means making bunds with the help of some stones or muds or other things for the steeper slope we can go for directly terracing terracing means cutting the land in the form of terraces and holding the things over there there are some other methods also which can prevent the soil erosion and they are like control of overgrazing don't allow the cattle to eat too much of grasses then construction of small check dams so that water can and so that the flow of water can be regulated next is a forestation on barren land so if there are any barren land we can go for the plantation and other things prevention of excretion of rocks so we can prevent the removal of the rocks because rocks can hold the land also and finally equitable use of the water resources we can sprinkle water because dry land can go away easily with the with the wind so now let's talk about desertification so what is desertification it is the conversion of the fertile land into an infertile desert so that is d de desertification conversion of fertile land into an infertile desert land is called desertification and what are the main causes they are again divided into two part like natural factors and anthropogenic factors so in natural it can be included that very low rainfall excessive evaporation and vast difference in diurnal temperatures diurnal temperatures means daytime and nighttime temperature so during daytime the temperature goes very high while during the night time the temperature is very low and finally high salinity of the soils anthropogenic factor or man made factors are continuous cutting of the trees overgrazing eating of eating of the grasses by animals over irrigation too much of water and excessive plugging and excessive use of fertilizers so they are some of the causes of desertification what are the effects 
it increases the rapid soil erosion poor soil quality and unfavorable climate it also changes the climate low water table water table goes down salty and hard water comes out huge economic losses also it gives the economic losses so how can we control this just go for just go for promoting large scale plantation of tree because trees can can control the desertification changing agriculture practices and promoting dry land farming can help also development of pastures like grassy lands and control of the overgrazing will reduce the desertification and promoting equitable use of the water resources only use the requirement required amount of the water no excess no less development of water catchment areas we must catch the water from the rain from anywhere else so these are catchment areas like lakes like ponds like other things so that was all about the land resources thank you